Hello, welcome. It's almost hard lore time. Bo is still on tour with Harm's Way, so we've got another very special extended mini for you this week. When we were at Outbreak Fest in Manchester, UK, we caught up with Nate Newton from Converge, Cave In, Doom Riders, etc. Nate is a true extreme music pioneer, a jack of all trades, and an inspiration to us both. This was only supposed to be 15, 20 minutes, and you'll see it's almost an hour. So we thank Nate for his time, and we hope you all enjoy. Hello, welcome. It's Mini Hardlore time. We are live at Outbreak Festival in Manchester, United Kingdom. How are you, Bo? I'm doing really, really well. Who do we got? We have a very special guest. Um, somebody that we've been a fan of for the greater parts of our lives, I would say. Uh, inspirational musician to us all. This is, you think we're f***ing around. Yeah. But we're absolutely chuffed to have Nate Newton. From Converge, Caven. Oh, that was cetera. very British of you. Yeah. Was yeah, it? Yeah. We're chuffed. chuffed. Yeah, proper See? chuffed. Proper chuffed, mate. I've yeah. been here a week. I'm British now. Yeah, I, I could tell. Yeah, thank I, you. Yeah. I look British. You do. How are you doing? I'm fucking great, man. Good. How long you been in Europe now? Since yesterday morning. Oh, you came from home? Yeah. Oh, shit. I thought yeah. you guys had been I was on tour with Caven a week ago. Wow. Caven and Yob. And then before that, I had a day off after the it, in order it went yeah. converge with Brutus that ended in Columbus, Ohio at um, some fucking festival mm. and then we had a day I had a day off to fly from Columbus to Denver to meet up with Kaven and Yob and then we did that tour mm. and then I came home for exactly a week and then flew here were you a big Kaven guy before joining the band? yeah I mean, they're, they're my friends, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I loved them. Me, too. Man. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do the, let me ask you this. Does the Caven camp know how I feel about Caven? How you feel is about it common? Kaven? Is it commonly known? Because I tell Adam as often as I can. He I say does. Adam. A Adam knows. Yeah, he, actually, he's mentioned it before. There we go. Um, I'm, on, I'm in the Caven army, dude. <laughs> I'm a general. You're a sonic death waller. That one hundred percent. Yeah, I've been. Nice. I climbed that wall long ago. That's killer. <laughs> uh, I, I love Caven. They're my friends. I feel like I watched them grow up. Mm. I'm, I'm like five years older than those guys, mm. and even though we all kind of came up together, like it, it. I don't know. It's been cool watching their traje trajectory and being part of it. Did it? And now being part of it is amazing. I mean, I would. Much rather have Caleb back than me yeah, being the band. Of course. Did, but, yeah. How did that feel when you got the call? Um, it just it felt like it's hard to explain. I mean, it it wasn't like I got the call. It was um, wow. you were the only man for the job. Really. Well, thank you for saying that. But it it just kind of happened out of necessity. Mm -hmm. Like all of us were fucking completely shell shocked by everything. Um, nobody nobody knew how to respond mm. everyone was fucking just fucked everybody was sad and of course grieving and uh then at, literally at his funeral um some of us were just talking about doing a benefit show and then w in that discussion it just came up like hey you know if you guys decide that you want to do this um I'll fill in you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and that was that that was it. That was all it was going to be. Yeah. Was just played the benefit shows, mm. and then the, then they had Final Transmission come out, and they wanted to just play some shows to commemorate that, and like you know, put, the, book in the band. Of I course, guess. were those things that they had written with him? Yeah, okay. the, those are the he he's on every one of those recordings awesome. on that record. That's um, cool. It's essentially just demos for what was going to be a, a, an album, gotcha. and they obviously didn't get to finish it, so yeah. they kind of uh, just hacked a lot of stuff together and, and made it, made them those songs as finished as they could be. And you were saying um, 
was it yesterday? Or was Ramen yeah. yesterday? You were <laughs> ramen saying, was yesterday. Ramen, yeah, good boy. God. You were saying... You were saying um, a few weeks ago when we ate Ramen. Yeah, there. <laughs> that the the shows, they were playing a lot of later stuff and people were digging it. On on this most recent tour, on yeah. Most we, recent tour, yeah. We did only material off the new album and two covers. Wow. And uh, people were into it. Like, the, the response to the new album has been fucking amazing. And this like, is your first with Kevin? This is my first album with Kevin. It's just been... It's been really great. And, you know, I'm... I love Kevin. They're my friends. My You know, they're like family. Mm-hmm. And I'm really happy to be a part of it, but more than anything... I've said this in a bunch of other interviews. Yeah, of like, I'm really fucking so happy to see those guys just healing and yeah. happy again wow. and like enjoying playing in cave in again of course because they had a lot of weird kind of negative feelings wrapped up in the band for a long time I mean, the 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 grief in the songs as you explained it yeah it makes like perfect sense yeah i mean that was a big part of why we decided to just play new material mm-hmm. it was like they've played those songs for so long that there's so many memories and so much grief in them that it's wow. it's like I never even thought about that you know it, it was like it, okay we the band has kind of been reborn in a lot of ways and like it's really fucking lucky hmm. and most bands don't get another chance like that mm-hmm. and so it's like it's time to move and your you know your touch is 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 very much there sonically I noticed on the record. I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess I sound like me. <laughs> that's what I like, yeah. man. That's yeah. what I want. And that's that's another thing is like you and Kaven converge. Inspirational to me as a guy who always wants to do 50 things at the same time. Oh, well, thank you. What was the band before Converge? My first band that actually anybody outside of my hometown gave a shit about was called Channel. Mm. Um, and we... Our, our our first seven inch was released by Jamie Josta. Stillborn. Yeah, number one, Stillborn. That was me. <laughs> Do you hear that, Jamie? <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, what did Channel sound like? Killing time. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it was. Dun, 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 dun. Oh dun, man. Dun, dun, dun. You oh, know, man. and then. Dun, 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 okay. Dun, you know that Take kind of you play bass? I played guitar. Oh shit! Um, Curveball. We. He does it all. <laughs> oh, I'm a fucking triple threat, Prolific, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're a quadruple threat. You know why? Because you're sexy too. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I don't hear that one much. You know what? Look you at know? those fucking pants. Tell it's me, just... this ain't a sexy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Take me back in a time machine to touring in the early '90s. Okay. Take me back to so my first tour ever. We had printed out MapQuest directions to and from venues. Oh, that didn't exist. Exactly. So that take, was revolutionary. Take, yeah, right, right, right. I had an atlas. Blessing. I Holy had an man. atlas that I bought. It was leather bound. Oh. And well, you, it was fake leather bound because, I, you know, yeah, cruelty free. For the animals. Uh, for the animals. Did you have, have you been, like a, a Rolodex of numbers to call when I you did. places? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. And... Uh, I mean, we all had like book your own fucking life and yeah. all all that shit, and like you would like go through like the personals and and MRR mm. and be you know look for anywhere that would book a show. Brutal. Um, wow. Yeah, it was very different. Have you been vegan that long? I'm not vegan. Oh, okay, my man. Ve- vegetarian. Ah. Um, vegetarian since I was 13. We'll, we'll get him. We'll since get you him. were 13. Since I was 13. Holy I don't think we're shit. gonna get. We're gonna get him. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, have you been to McDonald's? Yeah, you, you, know the, you know the Big Mac. I I'm familiar with the Big Mac. If you give it another it. shot, you might you might like. It. <laughs> have you tried to make plant here? I have. What'd you think? It's a Beyond Burger. Yes, dude, right. but it's like worse than a Beyond Burger. <laughs> yeah. You think? It's where it's less Beyond. It's it's it's, it's a what's here. what's the opposite of Beyond? Here. Cur- yeah. yeah, it's a here right. burger. It's yeah. a <laughs> right right in front of your burger. Yeah. I it was fine. Yeah, you know whatever. It's all you got, so you have. To One of my that, favorite yeah. questions to ask people who do sing in bands whether it's backup or full fronted bands is like when did you learn you could do the the, the, ah, the, the Nate voice the iconic Nate the Nate voice yeah. Joe Farrell yeah. yeah when did you figure that out pretty early on I yeah. think I mean like going back to channel like I did a lot of backup vocals and stuff then too but like everybody <laughs> w- in I'm imagining a moment where you're like yo I sound like fucking I sound sick, sick. <laughs> 
No, no, it wasn't like that. It was just like I realized, like, oh, I can fucking yeah. do this and hold a note. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But like back then, the screaming in hardcore, it was more shrill. Yeah. And so like I was shredding my throat, and uh, probably. Not long after that, my second band, Jesuit, I played guitar and sang right. in, and that was when I it like it clicked. Like, you don't have to fucking be at the top of your register all the time, and yeah. like that was sort of when I learned. So it. you sound like you're permanently at the top of your register, and your voice just—I've never heard it falter. And well, I can't. I can't. Well, it does. Oh. It does. Okay. Mm. Believe me. I, I don't. <laughs> but the like, the key yeah. is yeah. instead of trying to push as hard as you can. It's just like get like a kind of normal yell talking voice and just pick a tone. Yeah. And just clinch. I do oh, the man. same thing. Mine yeah. doesn't sound cool I, when I do, I do that. that. I gotta That's blow bullshit, it. man. I've heard you. I but I gotta <laughs> to be to be cool at all. You know, see what this see what just happened? Yeah, I, saw I gotta it die. Like you were taking I a shit. I was shitting. Speaking oh, okay. well yeah. So you can You can go ahead. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's tough. Um, Jesuit channel, Converge comes along. Yeah. Converge comes along, change the game. Ch- for me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for oh, me well, too. So channel for and Converge, we did our first tours together. Wow. Uh, I met those guys. I actually met Aaron Dahlbeck first. Um, the same night I met Jamie Josta, we did we did a show at the King's Head Inn in Virginia Beach or in Norfolk, Virginia, and it was. Josta 14, Dive, Channel, somebody else. I don't remember. Uh, and uh, Aaron was was like just roadieing for Fuck Dive. Yeah. Early 90s style roadieing, which just meant riding in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. And so that was how I met all those guys. And then we just became friends. Jamie's philosophy on... How to grow his bands is one of the craziest ones we've ever heard. I would love to know what that he, is. He strategically made like every decision possible to just be the biggest thing. So whenever possible, the, the the initial origin story summed up was he and a bunch of friends went to see Fugazi. They were moshing and got kicked out, along with other kids who were also kicked out for moshing. Well, who he didn't know there were many yeah. people that that happened to. <laughs> and his thought was, man. There's a lot of people who want like that outlet, but there isn't really like a music for it. We got to write a demo, and they literally he said in our episode. Then they went and wrote not one truth. I mean that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But I <laughs> was the strategy of like, okay, what's big and what's missing? Yes, connected but I, I would senses. argue that there was absolutely. I mean. Sepultura was yeah. touring Slayer was touring mm-hmm. uh, they toured together I was yeah. at that show <laughs> Fudge Tunnel opened and Clutch but like yeah the, p- there were shows where people moshed <laughs> I saw them it I was, was just, at them I guess it was the, the maybe the demographic of those who were kicked out who he wasn't seeing at other shows and blah 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 the eight, the eight shitheads who were yeah kicked, yeah and he was just like guys. I'm gonna write a demo for them yeah <laughs> he did yeah. Yeah, oh, he, he did, did. Yeah. he wrote it for me yeah, I mean uh, that demo is fucking great. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I let's, get it. Let's talk converge. Yeah. yeah, let's talk converge. What do you want to know? So you were you were you not an original member of converge? No, wow. I am converge's. Technically, I'm their fourth bass player. Oh really? Holy shit! Yeah, their first bass player was Eric Ralston, who I never knew, mm. and uh, he left very early on. Then Jeff Feinberg. Uh, who moved to Montreal to go to McGill University and he started the band Iyer. Mm. Um, and so he left the band and then Brodsky oh. played bass. He plays <sighs> bass on When Forever Comes Crashing. Wow. Oh. And then When Forever Comes Crashing and Until Your Heart Stops came out right at about the same time. <sighs> and Caven was like, you know, we're going to fucking hit yeah. it. And. Converge had a tour booked with Today is the Day, and they needed somebody to go on tour with them. And um, they were like, Well, you're irresponsible and don't have a job. <laughs> you want to play bass on this tour? That was the criteria? Basically. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, sure. And so then I 
drove up to uh, no, I didn't. I took a Greyhound bus up to Massachusetts um, three days before the tour started, mm. and they were like. All right, let's practice. And I was like, "Cool, I don't have a bass." Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> and so we went to Mr. Music, and the band fund bought me my Blue P bass that I still have. Oh, that's that's nice. fucking awesome. And then um, they were like, "All right, what songs do you want to play?" And I was like, "I don't know any." <laughs> so I sat in Kurt's bedroom, and he showed me how to play all the songs, and I fucking did not know how to play any of them. Wow. I, we went on tour. My first show with Converge was Crazy Fest in Louisville. Was that when the shit was getting thrown into the river? No, this was before that. It was oh, okay. still at a big indoor venue. Okay. But there were like 2,000 people there, and I couldn't. I didn't know how to play any of the fucking That's songs. That's insane. Because you it, think, it, like, we think about Converge, we think of the pros. The most pros. pro, yeah. Oh, no, dude. I just uh, I brought a distortion pedal, turned it up all the way, Fuck yeah. and I was like, all right, I'm just going to jump around and jump yeah. into the crowd a bunch. And oh. the parts that I know I'll play them yeah yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, yeah. Nah, nah. and that's pretty much what I did <laughs> uh, still let to me this day let me ask you something because I think then by that timeline there's an infamous video that was 98 and oh, what infamous video yeah because I believe in the background there's a Jane Doe banner so you would uh, this, this no that was um, at least four or five years later there's a you video. talking hate verge? No. Well, I would love no, to talk about you're, you're gonna you're gonna no, ask no. me about Gainesville Festival right now, right? What, was that when allegedly a certain instrument was used as a weapon? Yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. Allegedly. Allegedly. I've allegedly. never seen a video of it. Um <laughs> I know you're lying to me. Just <laughs> be open about it, man. It's cool. I'll tell you. That was about one it. of the first things I ever saw of Converge. Like early, early, like not even on fucking YouTube because YouTube wasn't around yet. It was on Daily Motion or something. I think I may have seen it on a v- on World? a VHS tape. Oh, cool. That, 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 like that must trade. have been like 2003 or 2004 because yeah. we were playing "You Fail Me," but it wasn't out yet. Do you remember cool. what happened? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Mo- that, moving on. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good. Um, that was arguably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Um. And I've done some stupid fucking things. Mm. But I will say it looks like I smashed someone over the head and I didn't. That's not mm. what happened. Oh. Um, Shoulder? No. So I'm not going to name names. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Someone who I was friends with who really it's their fault. They, they started. There you go. But the whole thing was like you ever go somewhere and you're just in a room and you're like I need to get the fuck out of here because yeah, yeah, this shit is about something's going to happen yeah. it was that kind of energy you could feel it in the air it was last yeah night and like it, there was just tension and what I remember is the security being very very rough with the kids at the show Always, uh, and people is... being very fed up with it and there was like this fucking makeshift stage barrier that was made out of two by fours and plywood ah. that was really not fucking safe and like it, it was just almost buckling and like security were just not they were being fucking real bullyish assholes and they didn't understand yeah where they were what was going on so 99 percent of the time yeah, yeah and so a person who will go unnamed finally was like I'm fucking done with this bullshit and he and ran out on stage and started kicking down the support beams on mm. the on the barrier cool which was ill advised not <laughs> smart and uh, then I would have done the exact same thing yeah and then uh, that resulted in a security person grabbing him and putting him in a full Nelson yeah and dragging him off the stage while another one was hitting him oh and uh and uh, there's so much to this story. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. i hadn't slept in like 36 hours because we had just done our first tour in japan oh. and we oh, flew straight shit. from japan to florida to boston we had a, a literally four hours and then we flew to Florida, landed in Florida, got in a van, and drove straight to the festival. You were hallucinating. You saw four arms. I was flailing. out of my yeah, fucking it was, you, you saw mind. Shiva. You saw Goro from yeah, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, yeah. One, and of course she was going to swing. 
He's the hardest boss. Yeah, in the world. and well, so that happened, and so it looks like I hit someone, and actually, what I did was break the the whole. I like got oh, nice. between and pried the arms off of him. Oh. With the uh, like, with the arm of the base, dude. That's like a I Ninja Turtle base move. Down, like, got in between him, so the dude let go. Whoa, oh, that's, that's awesome. even cooler, honestly. And, and then all fucking hell broke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then all hell broke loose. Yeah, yeah. And um, I just remember seeing that as as a as a young and being like, that Converge is fucking crazy. Converge is insane. They're fucking nuts. We were that day. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that was sick? <laughs> it was interesting. I mean, that it. was the saddest it, thing. Con- <laughs> insane and idiots, absolute idiots. Um, and it, it goes, it just keeps going from there. Well, it, got, it got completely. It insane. also goes very well because Jane Doe, the phenomenon. The phenomenon. Out. Did you? Let me, was there a palpable feeling finishing this record? Yeah. Where you were like, guys, I think we did something. No. Really? No. I, dude, you can ask Jake about this. I remember like vividly sitting in the back of the van driving to play some shows right after we finished it sitting with jake being like dude i don't know if this is a cohesive record (laughs) like i knew that we had written some really good songs and i knew that we were all really happy with the songs right but then the record itself i was like i don't know if all these songs go together or like if if the the order is right or whatever wow um, because that was the first time that we ever were like, all right. Well, honestly, it was the first time that anybody felt like it. We were capable of doing what we wanted sure. to do. Mm. Um, because that was Ben's first album with us, which and is like crazy. Yeah, and that was like you know, do this, and then he would just be like, <laughs> and you were like, that's well, better. You did, it. Yeah, you did something. <laughs> do that again. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> Four more times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, but uh, where did you find Ben? Ben actually. So Ben's from the Cape, and he from a cave. He's been playing in a cave. He's been playing in a life. cave. He's from Cape Cod. Cape, cave Cod. Fucking Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, no, he uh, played in a band down there called Force Fed Glass. Sick. And then he was. I, I think Kurt recorded Force Fed Glass uh, like really early on. Poached. <laughs> so Kurt was like, and oh, then he poached him yeah. to play in his project band, Blue Green Heart, and they put out one seven inch. And then when Damon was no longer in the band, mm-hmm. um, we tried out a couple of different drummers, and it was just well, uh, my friend John DiGiorgio played on the. Uh, on the poacher diaries oh wow oh shit. and then that didn't work out just like you know he he wasn't he was not cut out for touring at that point in his life um and then you know we tried out some other people and it just wasn't working and then uh kurt was like well you know this kid ben that played with me on the blue green heart seven inch he's really good and we're like yeah sure let's jam with him came in and he was like a converged super fan oh, at the time. Oh, so he knew it all. Really? It literally oh. was like, what What song do you want to play? And like just fucking nailed everything the first time. Like enough for a full set. And we were the like, oh, set. this is the dude. Thing. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah, and it was just immediate. Like that's the, Ben's our drummer. That's awesome. And, and here that we was are. that. Yeah. And that was like 2000, I yeah, think. Yeah, it would have to be. You know what's yeah. fun about Jane Doe? Not to harp on, but that's a record that I can listen to still, that I still find things. Like, I only yeah, just, yeah. within the last year, and I mean this, realized that in, there's Phoenix in Flight, Phoenix in Flames. Yeah. The one is just drums and vocals. Yeah. That's it. Never knew it. Just <laughs> Really? Never caught on. That's funny. Just learned, just realized it the other day. Well, yeah. AirPods changed a lot. It changed, dude. AirPod Max. Spatial I mean, audio. Oh, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah There's little crazy. nuggets and whistles on back there on, 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 on anything yeah. that I just wow. never knew were there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Like, it's funny that cohesion. It's funny, though, because like I listen to that record now, mm. and there's like, oh, why did we do that? Uh, I'm really? like, fucking, oh, that riff does not need to be there. Mm. Like, that, get that out. I wish... Some of the songs You're too are too close to it. Some yeah. of the songs are overwritten, in my opinion. Over interesting, overthought. But I would say your concern being cohesion is is ironic because it's 
probably the seen praise. This. I yeah. guarantee you, the first review was like five stars. Very cool. Oh no, no, dude. Oh, the reviews man. were not good. That's uh, that's crazy. Yeah, like um, it's funny. That was the first album that uh, the band ever had like a publicist working on it. Like the EVR had a publicist right. working on it, and Jake has a fucking binder full of reviews, and most of them are like. It's okay. It's mediocre. God. I don't get it. This sucks. I don't like it. It's like a literal paradise. <laughs> and then there, there were like a few that were like, this is incredible. Yeah. And I mean, we knew that we had made music that we liked yeah. and that we were stoked on. And like, I, th- for lack of a better way of putting it, that we had made a statement like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Like, like it or not, you know. Nobody it, sounds like this, so here you go. We do. Yeah, I mean, I guess to I don't us. know. Like to me, I mean, and to me, it was like I mean, it's just Rorschach entombed and drive like Jehu and Hoover. But that's like that, that's that's an unreasonable combination of things. Is it and outside of the converged vacuum? Yeah, you know? I guess. If somebody was like, "We sound like entombed and drive like Jehu," I'd be like, "Yo, turn it off. <laughs> Stop. You know? don't Stop do that. Don't, that. don't do that." <laughs> But, I, yeah. but now you say that, I go. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Right. I, I don't. I mean, it's just a. But I don't. I, I don't even know where I'm going with it. Other, other than like it rocks. We knew that we were stoked on what we had yeah. done, but eventually you did. Was, was there like a? Was that like a spark at that point? Like, did the rocket ship really start to go? Yeah, I mean, like as creatively it did, okay. yeah. and like there was a fire under us to just like. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Like, I have always kind of, maybe I'm an elitist prick, and I, but I, I don't like, mo- I think most music's not good. Hmm. There's, and, I mean, look at how much there is. There's, there's so, so much. How can it all, but any of it Especially then, yeah. like, late 90s into the early 2000s, especially in hardcore, like, it was just there was a lot of really bad mm. boring shit going on what was the direction where you that where it was going where you heard it and you were like oh, that, this is not for me when it started losing me was the new age records era oh preach brother except for unbroken unbroken were punk as fuck see I, yeah, yeah for some reason all the old heads in chicago love unbroken, love unbroken. And it missed me yeah i was too young you I, know yeah. i that, that would make sense it, it was like i had to be there kind of thing like everybody else was kind of doing like the new york hardcore worship mm-hmm. with like chuggy mosh parts which will always have a soft spot oh, in my heart yeah, sure. well, yeah, well. but like it was getting really polished of everyone was doing these like really at the time what seemed like very polished recordings and like it was just it had lost the the punk in it like what i was saying to you earlier in our conversation i was like you know when i stopped being able to hear the punk in it it just stopped being interesting to me Ah. and with um with unbroken like the first time I saw them, they were a fucking sloppy mess. You love it, that, and it was they were a sloppy mess that didn't care if they got hurt. They didn't care if anybody else got hurt. Love that. They were just like they went ape shit. How do you feel about that now? If there's like a fight on a stage or or uh, in the pit, this is I know that you guys are well. Th- it wasn't rooms, a fight but, though. It okay. was it wasn't violent. But now even even like a guy is knocked out, somebody will come on the stage and be like, "Stop, stop. the show! Stop! Stop!" To the like to the singer. Stop. It well, I mean, like, I saw, like, that's why we're here. But I saw that in the fucking eighties too, though. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. wasn't. That's not new. The stop the show. Aspect. Yeah, like, like when someone you, got really fucking hurt, people stopped. You know, you it was at metal shows where they didn't stop. Mm. You would go see fucking Slayer, and dudes would get f- would break a leg in the pit, and everyone would just stomp them. Do you stop for fights? Converge? Yeah. Do you yes. have a policy? Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have we we say this a lot, but after the uh, Travis Scott the thing. Travis Scott thing, like you kind of have to. Do you have a fight riff? Uh, no. When you'll come back. If, like, I mean, hey, hey, we've stolen Hate Breeds thing of playing Eye of the Tiger. That's but good. in the past, Amazing. but for the most part, I, I'm just like stop. Yeah, I'm just gonna stand here and look really displeased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a while, and just give you the I'm gonna dad you oh, like I'm just I'm not angry I'm just disappointed I've seen you dad you know 
<laughs> like I've seen it uh, come out of you, and I'm always like, <laughs> Papa, no. I don't want to be. Papa, so that would that would scare me as a show goer. I, I mean, it's not. It's just. I don't know. What it, it's just fu- at this point, like I, I I've talked about this with other people. Never on a podcast though, so hey. you know you're gonna get it first here. People talk about the violence in hardcore, and like in the formative and classic years, mm. and how people glorify it somewhat, mm. or they they look back on it like, oh yeah, tell you this cool fucking fight story, or this happened, or that happened, and like, and now people it, it, it happens now. And I'm like, fucking why? <laughs> why? Yeah. I, I like can the tell viol- you. The violence in general. You yeah. Say, I can tell you from my perspective, mm-hmm. when I started going to shows, the reason why those fight happened, fights happened were because there were fucking Nazis there trying to kill mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Like liter- or trying to recruit or tr- literally showing up just to fucking ruin yeah. everybody's time and hurt people. And they're not around anymore. Yeah, no. You know, like. In, in Virginia we ran them out mm. and like I'm just like why now we yeah. you but now you're just it, now this is just a dick flexing is, contest yeah, yeah, yeah. who yeah. the fuck cares violent fighting bad violence good that's my mm. policy you know mutual understanding of violence got know? it yeah yes so you're a crowd killer guy no no no, no. Right. but like t- tasteful you know? <laughs> tasteful crowd tasteful killer crowd killing. I don't what is tasteful crowd killing it's, you know it's, there's, there, it's elegant when you, you get know? over to the side and there happens to be a swing yeah that's that's fine but you know yo, yeah. when, when a guy is just going boom 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 oh yeah well tasteless there's some dudes not dude there's some people <laughs> men women crowd whoever, killers <laughs> who crowd killer they get out there and you're like you could be a fucking ballet dancer you <laughs> you are graceful yeah and i like watching you mosh exactly mm. that's Nor- what everybody should strive to hear and but you're not trying to hurt anybody right. you know and then there's other people that are like i'm gonna fucking fuck everybody yeah. up and i'm like why <laughs> like what's yeah, the Colin? I don't do that. Why? I'm a swan. You are not a swan. Excuse me? <laughs> you, are a, you are a goosely. I'm a graceful guy, though. Am I not? Did you say a Bruce Lee? A goosling. A goose. A gooseling? I'm yeah. fucking. A gosling. I'm, a gosling. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. You're Ryan Gosling. Thank you you're so right. much. Um, you're Ryan Gosling of hardcore. We did it. <laughs> you're, only, you're only over here right now for a, a very short while. What is your base? Your what is base, my base? Base rig like. What is your base? Do you have a flying thing? Do you have stuff that stays here? Uh. I just we there was like backline rental. It, rental it's stuff. just um, my normal shit. It's a Ampeg eight by ten and an orange eighty two hundred B. What I've been doing lately for fly-ins was um, I, I have a quilter base ah, block eight hundred two. Um, Solid state. It's a little. And the, oh. it's it's fucking amazing. Yeah. For on the, I decided not to bring it because. Uh, both shows have the back orange line. heads yeah, there, yeah. And I was like, "Well, this will be four pounds lighter." So and I no like, no pedals or nothing. You go no, I, I run. I, so I have a pedal board. Um, I forget that I play bass now. I should yeah, ask you. Yeah. I should use. It. Oh yeah. All right. So <laughs> I have a bunch. Of, I have ca- my board that I just had on the cave in tour. Mm-hmm. So there's shit on there that I don't really use. Right. Yeah, right. But my go to that no matter what a Nunez. Um, Tetra Fet drive, Ooh. which is actually just a guitar distortion pedal, oh, but it just it works really well for nice for works. me for bass. Every time I use a bass pedal, it just doesn't sound right. To Interesting. Me. Um, I, I use a, a combo bass guitar pedal as well. So you're right. But yeah. I pair that with an ODB. Oh, there you go. Fat farting. That's a lot. Of, that's that. a lot of stuff going on there, man. He that's is. noisy. I like it. It sounds. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What I want. And then I've got. Um, I always have like at the head. But we, I don't put any mics on my on my cab. Uh, I've got a ever uh, anywhere. No, so you're wow. got a, in front of house. I've got a but. radial JDX speaker simulator uh, DI on the back of the Sick. head. Yeah, and then downstage on my pedal board, I have a um, uh, a shift line cab zone bass, which mm-hmm. is like a, a cab and amp simulator like ir loader yeah um yeah. and so just two di's direct and uh they can mix mix the tone you're not That's gonna awesome. be able to do it but you can just pay well, but i love that because converge is also considered 
the best sound. T- Tony, in the band. you know, like <laughs> yeah. Tone Guy. We're Tony. You know, Tony, 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 Big Tony, 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 the the di blend with a live it's so good it's so fucking good yeah i mean like we have no mics on any cabs on the stage wow. Every, everything is is you di that? now um so well, like you know a, like amp and cab sim and then the the cabs are just for stage volume yeah you don't have to blow your ears up save your hearing yeah don't. Do you have or don't blow but blow like ears out. Uh, so like hearing. really what it the reason why i started doing it that way was just cuz fucking and like fucking you know mics move and and yeah. like god do that or or like the cable or what shit just gets fucked up and it never stays where you want it right. and like so uh we started doing that and it just takes all the issues away and then like for example on the on the cave in yob tour just now um we were out and you know, i'm running the the two di's that way and uh my cabinet died on stage oh. completely died couldn't tell up didn't matter didn't matter Holy yeah shit. couldn't tell. It matter to you but yeah i mean once, it, once it, you knew that you're I, okay, I, can, yeah. I mean i knew that it was it was fine i could yeah. still hear it so wow, and man. i was just like put in the monitor put in the monitor that's I'm good. awesome so yeah do you have and that's i know this might seem crazy a personal favorite converge record like the one you did I mean, where you were like nady likey i mean <laughs> It's always the newest one. Like, uh, but in particular, I guess I'd say there are two. Mm-hmm. Um, you fail me. Love. So Love. everybody talks about. Everyone always kind of cites Jane Doe as like the sure. the turning point record for con- or for Converge, and for me, it was you fail me. Uh-huh. I feel like on Converge or on Converge on Converge on Converge um, on Jane Doe, we were just sort of figuring out that we were capable of doing the things that were in our heads and you on you fail me that was when like what is going on in kurt's head man <laughs> i still wonder that daily <laughs> for so many reasons i'm sure he wonders the same about me oh yeah um but on you fail me that was the record where i feel like it really came together but also like that was the first record where we took a step back and we're like does that need to be there oh shit interesting That's does hard. like do are we doing too much in this song mm-hmm. i think we're doing too much like that was when we really started self editing and wow. and like and just approached it differently. Um, that was that to me is when converged the converge that everybody knows now that's when converge became converge. was it you family no heroes yeah and then what and was your brother the second one would be blood moon okay awesome. because that is so outside of all yeah. of our wheelhouses that it was like really for me it was just like holy shit we actually did this yeah. and there's like certain songs on there that I wrote music for that like I listen to them and I'm like I can't fucking believe Whoa. that this is That's me. us this yeah. is me yeah. how know, collaborative chill- is, is the writing for Converge very Nice. I mean, sometimes someone will bring a complete song to the table and, and play it, and we'll be like, "That's yeah, sick! All right, let's, <laughs> let's do it." How's that go? Command Show me how to, how to do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. usually it's very collaborative. Like when I usually when I write a song for Converge, now I don't write a full song. It's rare that I'm just like, "Here's the song." Yeah, yeah. It's more like because Kurt's gonna noodle and do his. Yeah, thing. well, I, and I want him to. Yeah, yeah you know, of and why else have? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, if if I comment. feel, you know, if I feel that he shouldn't do that I'll tell him Mm -hmm. and he'll do the same with me but like I bring like skeletons of songs to the table and I'm like Skeletor here's what I got got, I'm Skeletor present skeletons yeah there you go this part (laughs) is the femur there you go Um, but I'll I'll just like we'll go back and forth like give him a back and forth like here's I have an A and a B riff maybe a C riff and like let's jam on this and then we'll kind of that's when everyone starts throwing ideas in and like things actually become songs who who's the mosh park guy who is the the biggest advocate for of a, mosh parts of a pit. in the band all of us are okay good oh, great answer that but was a like, trick question <laughs> but we all have different ideas of when and where they should be so break down everybody's idea of what a, a perfect mosh part should be from your perspective oh. like what's yours 
in Converge? Yeah, yeah. From the Converge perspective, everybody's mosh input. Because I'm a mosh scientist. I consider myself PhD. Uh, uh, I, you know, I, it would be tough for me I'm to in say. Under right now. You're doing good. I'm in it would be tough for me to say what it is for other people. Through um, size. My okay, yeah, my yeah. two favorite mosh riffs. Yeah, hit me. In Converge, are the breakdown in Heaven in Her Arms. Dude, of course. That is my favorite. He, he put that on the list. That, really? That was on, on my list, list because I wrote the, that riff, baby. Oh, I fucking um, love. Those. It's on the list. It's on. Thanks. You, you can go back and, and see. And then it. my other favorite one is from the Dusk in Us, and it's at the end of Broken by Light. Okay. And Kurt wrote that riff. And like it, it, we, it's really short. Mm. When we play it live, we usually stretch it out longer right. just to yeah, nice. Just Love to watch that. watch people do whatever yeah, they're gonna the do. Thing. Um, thing. But uh, like, uh, th- that's the other thing is like I believe in like just teasing the mosh. Like you just get a little bit. That's all you're getting. Oh, so you well, better. That, fucking, I mean, that's that makes him need to listen to it again. That's so what that I'm saying. That is the ancient secret. There's songs where you can give it to him, and then there's songs. Where yeah, you get, you get a you get a taste because you got to play it. You got to yeah. play it back. I mean, I, I like live. like yeah. I like a good mid paced fucking banger all the way through, but it's got to like it's, it's got a reason flow. to get to the end too. Yeah, you know? it's got a it's got a flow, and it's got to like take you on a journey. If it's just like here's a fucking mosh riff. Here's another mosh riff. Mm. Mm. No, no, of course. Here's the third mosh no, riff. No, I'm like, that's just that fucking boring. It doesn't man. work that way. <laughs> you know? You got to earn it. They must be earned. They must be earned. You know? There's another shit. The mosh must be earned. The mosh <laughs> must be earned. <laughs> do you, could you, off the top of your head, do you have a favorite breakdown of all time? Of all time? Yeah. Any bin. Even like a top three or four or five. Fuck. Just a part where. Integrity, March of the Damned. There you oh. go. Oh. You, you put, put Judgment Day on I did. part two, right? Yep. That's a good one. That's a good one. The dive bomb, yeah, come on. But the the end of March of the Dam, yeah, that's yeah the first weird. time I heard that record, that I was like, whoa, holy fucking <laughs> shit! I want to kill everything. Pardon this interruption. Wow, Bo, it is so good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. It's been months. Uh, it feels it feels like years. Let's. Uh, we've got some ads to tell the people, but it's very special today because now it's. You're putting them both to use every single day on this tour. I literally, I, I literally, yeah. First and foremost, I'd love to talk about Loop. Loop earplugs, baby. Tell me about your experience using Loop on a U.S. tour for the first time. U.S. tour first time, or first time, I use them every single day. I have used them every single day. They've been on my keys every night. I've enjoyed them. They're really easy. They go right in. They stay in, which like I'm, I'm moving. And I, I mean, because they have so many different sizes in every single pack. I'm a medium man. You're a medium man, as am I. Some people are bigger, some people are smaller, but they've got you covered. Every single pack comes with every size. Mm-hmm. Sizes you ain't even heard of, frankly. You don't even know about it. And the important thing to remember is this is all about and promoting ear health. You're going to shows, you're a musician, you're writing, you're a fan, whatever. Protect your ears. You're never getting it back. In your case, every single night, if you were exposed to harsh sounds for 30-something straight days, if you were right next to playing guitar live with no ear protection every day, you'd come home with permanent ear damage. That's the truth. That's scientifically So protect true. your ears. If you're listening to live mu- loud music, if you're listening to live music, if you're going to see, mm. even to the movies, Lana wears them to the movies. Loop earplugs, man. They got you covered. Whatever decibel shortage you need, they yeah. got you. Obviously, it's also Manscaped time as well. Tell me about have for the first. This has got to be revolutionary. Having Manscaped on tour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me, talk to me. I trimmed last night with right. using my uh, my trimmer. Let's see. I use the preserver every single day. I use. Um, I play in the boxers, the boxer briefs every night. They're good. The, they're good big fan dude i gotta imagine reviving post set every night yeah yeah that's the move. real experience <laughs> it's it's really nice i don't i don't look forward to touring for that long ever again if i ever do it but you better believe i'm gonna have a whole separate manscaped bag with me yeah it's, it's kind of actually what i did i have all my like gym and post show things in a little duffel and i go straight for the manscape stuff every time and then you know luck luckily if you use code hardlord 20 percent off and you get the big 
lawnmower pack, you're going to get a mm-hmm. travel bag with it. You're going to get all the stuff we're talking about from the preserver, the reviver. Uh, if you get the body wash, it comes with this scrubber and I'm, I didn't bring it on the road. I you don't have the scrubber. Dude, that's I didn't crazy. bring it. I've been using the scrubber more than ever. <laughs> it's so awesome, right? I, I love it. Scrubbing. I can't stop scrubbing. <laughs> It's crazy. Well, uh, it's so good to see you. Uh, mm, I'll see you soon. I can't wait to do a big, huge episode when you get back. Yes. Harm's Way, yes. Common Suffering Tour, still going now. Still going. Back to the episode. Are we talking only hardcore? No. No, no, because we have like suffocation. The first one is shit. mostly metal. Yeah. yeah. Killing Time, Backtrack. There you go. Amazing. Um, That's a song that if, if I, I could see it covered every day and I'll yeah. be in the pit. Yeah. Yeah, up, that that's a good one. Killing time. I, my one regret with the Josta one is that I couldn't get him to say killing time. I love the way he says it. He says killing time. Killing time. Yes. Going on tour. <laughs> that was <incredible. laughs> that was really good. Yeah, you just summoned him. <laughs> I've I've known Jamie for a long time. Yeah. Um, just it's one. not a breakdown. That's okay. Mm. We've got. Those. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna go. Um, it's a tie. Okay. I love it. Between two songs on the same record. Even better. Sepultura, either Amen or Territory. Oh. Propaganda was on ours. Propaganda was on ours. Um, the thing about Territory that's interesting is the breakdown is just gang, 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 gang. Yeah. Because the whole song it's is also, a fucking. Oh. That fucking record. <sighs> Masterful. It's it feel how did they do that? It, it, you know? So I know a lot of fucking death metal dildos that are like fucking when that record that record fucking sucks. No That's when they, I'm like, fuck you. That is one of the greatest metal records of all it is a, it is fucking a, time. I would say any genre. Yeah, I, one of the few perfect front to back pieces. It of is so fucking good. Perfect. Like that record changed my whole shit up. I was like, okay, this is I mean, I already loved Sepultura, yeah. Yeah. but then that record came out, and I was like, "So that fuck was, everything else." That was like an Igor. Exact, I love you. He's the uh, Igor's my dude. Those like are the guys, like the Cavaleras, champions of new music. They yeah. are it's very. They, true. they go on fucking Bandcamp and just check shit. They're out. they're I real as fuck, man. <laughs> yeah. That patch on immediately. They're That's the best, be. man. Like yeah. Igor and Igor is. The, you know why I love Sepultura? Because they're punks. That, that's, that's they're not exactly metal right. dudes, and that, and that that's proof exactly is Chaos AD is like the example of what you would not like because it's like you, it's getting polished, it's getting cleaner, but and you and the, but the fucking tracks and the ethics got are so undeniable. It's got groove. groove. That's why dude. it's not just like metal part breakdown. It's all groove. Yeah. Even and, the fast shit. It's and all weird, groove. weird shit too. Like like Nomad with the count in where it's then sped up. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, yeah, I could go on. And thinking about, about that, that, that that's record. probably their third language, and the lyrics are brilliant. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> good yeah. point. Brilliant. Like I can't write that shit. They're uh, they're the best. They I, so Igor, so. like when we took Pet Brick out on a on a Euro tour last year, and um. I mean, I, I love Igor. All we did every night after the show, like we were sharing a bus. It was us full of hell and, and pet brick. We would just sit in the bus lounge and fucking pass, like just pass the fucking cord around and plug in our phones and just we're just playing you, music for each other this? all night. And it was like, you know, check out this crazy metal record. All right, now listen to this free jazz record. Now listen to this weird electronic <laughs> record. And it was just... Every night, it was fucking awesome. awesome. And like, dream. Yeah. like Igor, you know, he's like, by all fucking standards, mm-hmm. he's a metal god. Yeah, yeah right. And he yeah, is yeah. so not a metal dude. And but he's like, rocking sick of it all shirts and shit. Yeah. And dude, I mean, he's a punk. Promos, yeah. But I mean, like, listen to Pet Brick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are fucking incredible. And it's th- like, you don't see many people from his era and his generation i mean he's he's still very relevant Mm -hmm. but like who came up when he did who are still really pushing the fucking limits he's like all right i already did that i'm gonna do some other fucking wild weird shit now and it's designed for you to not like it (laughs) i'm challenging you to like this it's the last extreme you know and he's he's real like all those guys are and so 
Yeah, man, I have nothing but love and respect for them. As do we. Yeah. Um, a couple questions we ask everybody. And then we'll let you go. One is phrased a little funny. It's who do you do? And it's like on stage, there's there's guys that are girls we see in our lives as musicians that we, we see them do something, play a certain way. Mm-hmm. We take that with us forever. Didi Ramon. I can see that. The way you jump and play kind of high up on the neck. Yeah. I can see that. Dee Ramone. I can totally see that. Daryl Jennifer. And, and Keith Huckins. Who's Keith Huckins? Played guitar in Rorschach, Dead Guy, mm. Kiss a Goodbye. Gotcha. That makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. Amazing. Great answer. Great answer. Right off the rip. Yeah, that was good. I can oh, see yeah, Dee I know who I do. Yeah. <laughs> we think about it all the time. Yeah. yeah there you go. The other, the other thing would be the Golden Arches question, we call it. We already, we already talked briefly oh, about, boy, I can't about wait. Dear Ronald. This is a magical... We're, we're in a mythical place in this scenario. Okay? okay. You're in America. You're driving down the highway. You are you got enough time to stop and eat. The band is. The band is. Yeah. Sorry. You see a sign like on the side of the highway that's got every fast food place that you've ever heard of. Okay? It's magic. What's the one that you're seeing? You're going, oh, shit, they got... And you're pulling that, that off. That Converge collectively goes, let's go, guys. Lunch fast food? Accelerated, Accelerated cuisine, cuisine counts, too, counts as well. So I mean, does like Wagamama count? I've I don't know heard. what. I don't know. I don't that know. Was, what is Wagamama? Is it a chain? You've never been to Wagamama? No. no. You're in the UK right now. No. And you've never been to Wagamama? Never been to Wagamama. I've been here 10 times. I've never heard these words. Are you serious? Yeah. You Wag- should go there. Wagamama? Wagamama. It's like an it Asian wag- fusion. It's got a boot place. Wag- Wagyu it, mama. Right? Like Wagyu. Fucking ramen and. Oh. It's awesome. It's and a they, chain? It's a chain. It's fucking everywhere here, and it's really good. And that's the spot. No one's ever mentioned this Nobody's to us ever before? Seen this before. That's amazing. We've to never me. been. Ev- this is There's I, one fucking. I looked it up. This is 1.3 miles from here. You're doing like a long right now. potion castle yeah, you're, bit. You're, you're, you're making it. You ever been to Wagamama, man? <laughs> How about I knock you around? <laughs> you're, you're doing, you're doing I'm them. dead serious, man. But I do that with uh, distortion pedals all the time. People ask You'll me. Just like, make shit up. Yeah, I use yeah. a fart box. Seven hundred. <laughs> I have fucking bass jazzerciser, man. Oh, they're like, you know, I'll run well, it. who makes that? Fucking uh, F- get, FRT oh, electronics. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's sick. You should check it Is out. Is there a U.S. place that you would pick f- with the Golden Arches question? Where converge? I mean, t- I, Taco Bell beautiful i can always make it work at that's Taco the point Bell, you, know? you know that's what but, we're all about yeah. yeah but you know i i i love a chipotle yeah you know? i'm a soldier he's got ptsd he's got ptsd yeah he's gonna be okay i got chip chip ptsd you got your ptsd you know? yeah, why'd you get chip no ch- ch- it was just over over I mean, covid yeah. it was just like yeah. constant. it's right? just i have i had to eat it so much in my life that i won't i do feel it. I, I love it well i mean i don't go there all that often but yeah. it's like a if I'm on the road and it's Everybody like, all right, I know that we can all eat there and be no one's gonna fucking and they got Coke products be a baby Huge. about it, you know. You like soda? Some. I'm very uh, honestly. I really only drink one soda. What is it? Ginger beer. I love ginger beer. Yeah, no problem. I'm a ginger beer guy, but like otherwise, no. They got that. Uh, they got that. Um, it's not Iron Brew, but it's like the crazy Jamaican ginger beer here. The crazy or, Jamaican? Yeah. Is it called that? I might be. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. But it's like spicy. It's like brutal. That's my shit. It's so good. I'm in. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, yeah I'm man. Having a blast. I'm, I'm having a great time. I mean, this is an hour. We can. <laughs> All right, what time is it? Seven. Oh. Oh, is it really? Yeah. All right. Five yeah. To I'm going to have to cut this Better one go. short. Let's go. No, no, this is perfect. Thank you so much, Nate, for joining us. This Thanks for nice. having me. We'll have to do more because we'll I do. could go on. I'm, oh, yeah. I am fucking. I, boring and don't do much in my You're life, perfect. so I will talk to you all goddamn day. <laughs> Converge, cave in, Doom Riders. The list goes on, and it's oh, the list even, goes on. We didn't even talk about Doom, Doom Riders. Riders who who could not make a shirt on the Death Wish East store that I that I would not buy. <laughs> I, I challenged them to go back in time and make one that I wouldn't order. They couldn't well do it. now you ha- I gave you some fucking shirts that you have that's to true. make now. We'll make yeah, them. It's true. Yeah, available now. Click the link. <laughs> link below. Click this link. <laughs> Thank you, Nate, for joining us. You're the man. Thanks for having me. Of You're course. the men, too. Oh, Aww. thank you so much. You're, uh, let's go. Bye. Bye. Bye.